Today is a new day. We're up in Michigan. It's gonna be good, but the problem is, it might be a little bit of might be a little bit of wind noise issue. Um, apparently, it's windy in Michigan on this lake here. On I did a real good job. I'm actually wearing bibs today. Um, I made them made them look pretty fresh, real fresh. John's got the old boots on. He's he's uh, a. This is a that is a giant bag though. For it real. is big as hell. We're fishing with this dude right here. He actually, he hooked up Perrick. He got Perrick on fish. Cause Perrick, whenever Perrick goes places, he needs help like really bad. Like right now he's in Texas. Um, he needs help in Texas. So if anybody's in Texas, they want to help Perrick out, give him a call, give him a ring. He needs your help, I promise you. Yeah, I, I brought a couple reels. Here. Yeah, I got, a, I got a spinning and a couple bait casts. Okay. So we're gonna hop on the water. Let's go catch some giant smallmouth. This is the, the little underspin. I caught a whole bunch of them in Texas the other day on this, but this one's like, Absurd colored green. And I love me some Timmy Hortons. Update on our life, we're on the boat. Having a little bit of uh, engine issues. Uh, his water, or his water, his engine's taking on water. It's probably not a very good thing. So we're gonna, he's gonna do this for the next about mile. We're not giving up on the day since we drove all the way up here. We're gonna go catch smallies. Still, still rocking the trolling motor. We've been doing this for about 20 minutes. A little bit of a, uh, I would say there's a little bit of wind. Just a little bit. This is what we're starting off with. There we go. There you go. Yeah. There you go, son. Oh, oh, oh okay. that's it. You got it. You got it. <laughs> oh, that's a PV Smalley right there. <laughs> First fish. Oh my God! Look at that thing. <laughs> Oh my god, we were just talking about reels. Let me take some pictures. Look at that thing just. <laughs> oh my god, that is giant. Well, there's a new PB smallmouth, real quick, for you guys. Hold on, hold on. Uh, we, got, we have to weigh it. We have to weigh this. Okay. Look at that toad. Woo! That is awesome. That is. That thing, he didn't hit it pretty close to the boat. Did you see that? No, I didn't see where he hit. Oh, yeah, he hit it real close. I was a slow roll in that thing. That is so awesome. All right, I'm gonna, we're going to get a weight on this thing for you guys because this is, this is for sure my PB, 100%. Oh, easy, easy. oh look at that. There we go. We're the deal. Look at that fish. That is, a, that is a toad. That's Rob's fish. There Always we go. New PB. That is for sure a new PB. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go ahead and have... Oh, what do you think? It's a four something at least? High three. Four, 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 oh, yeah. four, four. <laughs> that is my new personal best smallmouth. First fish of the day yes. is a four, four. Thank you, dude. Good work. That's awesome. There we go. First fish in Lake Huron. We're gonna put some in the live well, so hopefully we can get at least. Be cool to have two fish a piece. You know what I mean? Yes. Awesome. Oh, and guess what we caught it on? Oh, a little swim, swim bait, swim jig, underspin. We were killing them last week on these. Let's get back at it. That thing hit it right at the boat. Ah, and the wind's calming down a little bit, so that's that's good. He John, says that and it starts gusting. It starts gusting. John's back there throwing a tube, tubing it up. Well, John, you want to hand some of me some of those seeds underneath you? Oh, never mind. I found the found some. Oh, who doesn't want a good old beef stick in the mouth? Oh, wow. These are real. Oh, these are these are these are real beef sticks. All right. So who doesn't ever want beef in their mouth? Is crazy. John's back there being a pansy about the beef. I'm gonna stick this thing. Oh, I can't wait. Here you go, John. Here you go. Take take that stick of beef. Do you want a beef stick? Oh, okay. Here you go. I'm about to just get this beef stick. Mm. Oh yeah. It's a good hunk of beef. I do like that beef. Good one? Oh there you go. Well, John just hooked into his first. Ooh, here you go. Got his on a tube. Got his on a tube. I'm still committed to the underspin. Yeah, you're doing a real good job. Are you getting about Lake Huron? Is all the rocks, but they're also eating that tube. I asked you once already, but I'll just ask you one more time to make sure. But are you filming this in two frames per second? Oh, yeah, I kind of. I mean, look at this slow mo from this. Oh, yeah. Yep, see, we're on the other side of it, not, still not coming <laughs> off, which means it probably is a smallmouth. Just kind of sitting there. You got a really good hook set on it, though. At least you know it's not coming out. 
I mean, that could be a Goliath grouper. Oh, to come loose? Pro. That's how you do it, folks. I'm glad I have a paddle in the boat. You actually have a paddle in the boat? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm glad. I mean, I'm glad I guess you have a paddle in the boat, but I'm not glad what that means, probably. No. It means that you have to get out and paddle. No. How deep is it right here? Sid the Sloth might have to get out and actually paddle for us. Sid the Sloth. We're going to do an on the water update. We're going to do this. Um, if you guys don't know what on the water update. Your, there oh, there we go. This probably looks a lot better. We're going to do an on the water update. We have a buddy of ours that does this a lot. He talks like this. Um, we're catching a lot of big fish. Our trolling motor is down to zero. Is this the time where you touch your face and you do this? Maybe we should go get some steaks. Because uh, maybe I can learn how to cook a good steak. It's got a lot of room on this boat. I'll let you know that much. I can got a lot of activities. We can we can do a lot of cartwheels. Yeah, we're about to get yoked here in a second. Are we, are we really having a paddle? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. I love Michigan. <laughs> it's basically. Too I'm now I'm now paddling a uh, 20 foot six inch fiberglass bass boat. <sighs> oh, this is. I I'm actually in love with Michigan right now. So you know. So I just thought about something. We gotta get into these rocks over here. Even though, even if we get to those rocks, we still got another half a mile to go. But Noak thinks it's gonna be okay. Uh, apparently, this isn't his first time breaking down in the middle of Lake Huron. Oh, it is your first time. Okay. Well, I take that back. Um. Well, I'm glad. <laughs> Me and John make the drive up here, and the boat took a took, took dump the bed. Took, took a dump on the bed. Here, let me let me let me seriously get on the paddle. I don't mind getting on this. Sorry, Sorry for what? Oh. I gotta turn the boat. I gotta turn this boat. How we turn it? Oh. Oh. Turn boat. Turn boat. No just, prop walk. I was just about to say. Slow that motor down. Just so you Slow guys, down. just so you guys know. Oh gosh, this thing's set on continuous. Oh, Idle speed only, huh? All right. We need to release these fish. The other side. That one doesn't even have any water in it. That's Rob's personal best. There we go. You want me to wait for you? First year on smallmouth ever. Gotta love a little Great Lake Smalley. Sick. Release. Oh, look how pretty. Oh, oh that was. There goes mine. There goes Rob. A little bit more subtle. Nice. All right. Nice <sighs> fist bump. I figured since in Texas, I can catch my personal best largemouth just by taking one cast of the ramp. I could just do it here up north with a tube. But apparently, that's not how it works down here. Unfortunately, Gary doesn't own Lake Huron, so these fish aren't necessarily trained to eat my frog at will. <laughs> so I actually got to work for these fish. How boring is that? I actually got to work for them. God, look at that. That is so bad still. What? My hand. Yeah, that's good. All right, so John and I made it back over to the courtyard, but did this, this is good though. This is good. John brought this entire thing of mail, which we get to go play around with. I'm going to grab, we got some coffee. We're gonna go check out the seafood joint that's like right next door. But on a good note, we are fishing again tomorrow and hopefully he does have a, another boat for us to use or we're using that boat. He's only, he's only a couple years younger than me. He's a really nice guy. I like him a lot. I'll link him below. I mean, if I, I like him a lot. He's a good guy. Go check him out. He, uh, he catches really big small mouth. He's really good. At, he's a good small mouth fisherman. Good small mouth fisherman. So the guy just hit up with John and I and it looks like we're gonna be using his boat tomorrow, which means we're just gonna have to troll him on. He's got a, he's got a, he's got a leak in his engine. Like he's got water getting into his engine. So it's leaving like a milky white residue, like insane issues. Like when you turn it on, it like makes like almost kind of like a knocking noise. The white fuel, that's um, that's uh, lower unit fuel. Yeah, that's he, lower unit. Lower, yeah, he's, he's got some really, really, he's got a big, big issue going on with his engine. So we can't even turn it on. So that's gonna be where we're going into tomorrow. But tomorrow there's only really six mile an hour winds. Today was probably like 15 to 20 sustained. But I'm pretty confident going into tomorrow that we're gonna catch fish. Cause if you're not confident, you're not gonna catch a, a, like anything. I know, I've, I've lost four in a row. This is this could be five, this is not gonna be five. I'm winning this, this thing. This is probably not a very 
cheap meal knowing John because he's very, very, very expensive. Anybody that wants to date John, make sure you're, you've got a fat wall. That noise is just... Yes! Thank God I got the, uh, what, what, what was that meal? What did I get? That was, I had like I a... I got steak and crab. I got steak and crab. I got pasta. That's called winning. Alright, this is, this is almost the end of this video. I'm gonna, when I get back to the room, one of the questions that I've been asked a ton is about my tattoos. Um, I think I actually might go over my, my the entire tattoos. I got a whole bunch of tattoos on my arms. All right. I have a butterfly. On he's my got lower a back. he's got a butterfly in his lower back. I got a lot of my tattoos in a very short period of time. I, this entire arm was done in like a day, because I was just spontaneous before Iraq. So I was like, I need to get tattoos on my die. Yeah, that didn't happen. Now I'm walking around in Michigan with a uh, John B. Okay, real quick update on our night. John's car is making a very, 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 very distinct odd noise, and I'm pretty sure. It just started when we were at the ramp a few a uh, few hours ago, coming down, and now is uh, he's either got like a, a rock stuck up in underneath his brake pad, or he's I mean his his, his he, you guys you guys are about to hear this. Listen to this. Oh, that is, sounds so bad. Yeah, that sounds so bad. That's like straight metal on metal. So what I want to know is why did this just start? We were on a ramp. I put the I put the Highlander on the e-brake because we were on an incline and like as soon as we took off when Rob was driving it started making this noise now the 2010 Highlander we have sometimes makes this noise but you see this you see that silver what is that called this is that's the pad or this is the, that's the brake pad what's this the drum that part the top portion of the drum is like literally shaved but the bottom port portion is like clean just this ah oh, it just pisses me off because we got six hours it's gonna have to be like this. Six-hour drive tomorrow, and I just don't want to deal with this. I, feel I like don't. I, out. I'm trying to think. I don't think it is a drum. I think a drum is its its own separate. That's the brake pad. That no, the pad is a little thing. Okay, so the caliper brake pad. I don't. We don't well, we you don't know, know what? We fish, and shoot guns. But yeah, show them that real quick. Why did the hell? Because it keeps getting worse. I could drive around the block oh, again, yeah, and see, it would get worse. Oh yeah. Right oh, there. That's nasty. So you guys could help me out. Let, it, let me know. Let them know. I don't know. I don't work on cars. I shoot guns and fish. Okay, reverting back to what I just said. It's a disc. I'm an idiot. I am an absolute disc. Is a disc. Dead. His disc is My dead. Disc is dead. That's what it is. I remember the name of it. That is it. I want to get inside. I'm going to talk about these tattoos because I've been asked probably a thousand times about these tattoos. May as well knock it out right now because today's today's video is very interesting. It goes from fishing to talking about tattoos to talking about brake discs. And tomorrow we're going to talk about how to fix your car because my car is broken. <clears throat> Alright, so you guys want to talk tattoos? We'll talk some tattoos. I've got a couple. Just a couple of them. You ever notice why they never stick lights on... That's another question. Why is there not any ceiling lights inside hotel rooms? Alright, so we're good. So these tattoos that everybody keeps talking about and asking me about the lighting in here is complete, just horrible. So like this one right here, this one. Okay, so I got this one. Boom. This one says, oh, this one's 07. This this one's for my dad. When he died, I got that one. Not when he died, but I got all three of these tattoos within like the same day. One life, one savior. That is OU Texas, and this is. I just got them all because I was like, I'm about to go to Iraq. I got that after basic training because I'm a. I was a pretty badass private, let me tell you what. Got this when I was 15 years old. I had some random girl that I don't even know her name or knew who she was. I said, draw me my initials in a, in a cross and I'll get it tattooed on my body. So I went and did that. Yeah, I was kind of spontaneous and I got the state of Texas on my chest and my last name on my back. Oh yeah, and then I got this. I got that before I racked too. I got a bunch of tattoos before I racked. But this one's the most spontaneous one ever, and I got it done in somebody's kitchen. Like, don't ever, don't, don't follow in some of the stuff I've done. I've done some really dumb stuff. Like when joining the army, that was random as hell too. But getting these tattoos, a lot of them were really, really random. I think half my tattoos were not even done in a tattoo parlor. That's how spontaneous and random it is. I do not recommend that. Do not do it. It's very dangerous. But I don't have any diseases, which is good because I've been tested like 400 times in the army. So tomorrow, John and I, who is over there editing some, some crazy fire, I guess, are going to be fishing with the same guy who is linked below. He's a very cool dude. He's just having some boat issues. But we're, we're very confident in the ability to catch fish tomorrow because it's a little bit of wind, like six, five, six miles an hour, and hopefully all that sediment in the lake had, had kind of go down because smallmouth, 
I'm not a fantastic smallmouth fisherman. I've only started doing it this year when I met John and them, but apparently they're very sight oriented type feeding fish and you, it, the water was dirty, they couldn't see, so. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'm sorry it was kind of random. Tattoos, cars, that's, that's just, that's just us. Daily videos, so. I will see you guys tomorrow at the same time every single day.